you have one of these? It's a sous vide stick. This is corned beef flat with the spice package. And we're going to pick the labels off and we're going to cook this directly in the hot water in the original BPA free bag that it came in, that it was packaged in. Okay, the first thing to do is fill up your cooler. If you don't have a cooler and you're using a pot, the sous vide stick comes with a little bracket like this. You can just put it on the side of a pot, screw it on tight, and then just put your sous vide stick in. Um, I've also used this to clamp it if you don't have a large pot. You can also clamp this onto a double sink and sous vide right in the sink, a big piece of meat. I've got my cooler with the hole in the lid and I've got the right amount of water in there. So I have done this many times with different cuts of meat with brisket, uh, prime brisket, pork belly, um, corned beef and I was approached by somebody um, a week or so ago and he said can you sous vide brisket right in the bag? Absolutely and that's what we're going to do. We're going to sous vide in the bag and you can see the spice package right there. It's going to go on for the ride, but um, this one's from Aldi, and it's not, it's not a really salty one. It's one of my favorite ones. Costco and Sam's Club, Walmart, they all have a, a good brisket. They're not too salty. The brine's very good in it. Um, I've chosen the flat today, and we're going to do a reverse sear on this. Now, I know a lot of people have a sous vide stick that they got for a present and they don't know what to do with it and they're going well you haven't used that in a long time well this is a great way to um, to use it and when corned beef goes on sale in March um, get a few and pick the stickers off and put them in a bag and put them in the freezer and you can do it in the summer it's a very easy meal because it takes 24 hours so you go throughout the night and then you finish it off with the reverse sear the next day so I've picked my stickers off this is three pounds. I'm going to put that in. Put my lid on. Nice and tight. My sous vide stick of choice. This is my third one. This is an Anova. And I really like this one for a couple of reasons. It's, um, it's well made. It hooks up to my phone. So I can control it from wherever I am. If I want to extend my stay on the beach or the boat or whatever I'm doing, I can always just put it in warming mode. And, um, and it can turn it on and off and I can store my recipes. So I really like it. And the reason why you want to pick the sticker off is because on the uh, packaging is because you've got little impellers. You can see the little impeller there. That's the heating element right there. And there's the impeller. And you don't want the label to get caught in that and choke it up. So in we go. And for this, I have a little pool noodle that I cut. Just custom cut it, just to make a really nice seal. Just like that. So I'll plug this in. I'm just gonna do it old school by the little wheel here. So it's ready to go. So the temperature of the water is at 84 degrees. That's 84 right now. Um, I'm taking this up to 160 degrees. 160, bang on, right there. And I just press my start button. That's going to go for 24 hours. And then we'll do the reverse sear. Now, for what I normally do is, since this is going to be at 160 degrees, I backpack some chicken thighs into food saver bags and I season them up. And so what I would do for dinner tonight is I would take that and I would put that in for two hours at 160 degrees and then do a sear on the, on the skin. Just so that you have something, if you've got the hot water going, might as well. And this is going to go all night long. We'll be back at this time tomorrow. Okay, it's been 24 hours on the sous vide corned beef reverse sear cook. And it's been holding steady at 160 degrees. I'm just going to unplug it now. And I just basically pull this out, dry it, and then I'll air dry that for, for a day. And then use it again. This is dead simple, doing this recipe. Now I don't normally film on a 
very windy day like this and landscapers and golfers and but we're pretty deep into this cook now and so it won't take long to finish this off. I'm going to preheat my pan on the little induction burner here. At this stage you can just jump right in and eat this but we're going to put a and you can see the little spice packet still in there. So what I'm going to do is pour this juice into the pot. I'm going to save my juice. I'll probably do some cabbage and onion and a tiny little carrot in there too. So I'm keeping that juice and I'll just add some water to it. I'll just move this cooler so that you can see. I'm going to retrieve this little spice package in here and I'm going to pull the corned beef out. It shrunk down quite a bit. Oh look at that, that's all apart. Wow. Yep, you could just eat that right now but we're going to put a little bit of a sear on that. Cabbage and onions. And I'm going to take a little piece of paper towel and kind of blot this dry a little bit. Oh, this is going to be so good. Now, I've got some browning sauce. The browning sauce adds a really nice color to this when we fry it. And I'm just going to put some on it. It'll help make the, um, the spice package stick. See, there's the nice fat cap. So I just basically want to get it onto that and then we'll just give it a little bit of a fry. My oil of choice is refined coconut oil. It doesn't taste like coconut, but it has a really high smoke point and it puts a very nice crust on the outside. So I'm going to put that in. Now for the spice package, it's mustard seed, coriander, little ground up um, bay leaves. If you don't have a spice pack with your corned beef brisket, then you can just buy some pickling spice, but we want to put some of this on the outside. Just adds a really super nice flavor and a fresh grind of pepper. And we're just going to go fat side down on this just to get some to fall apart. There we go. Two minutes, two to three minutes on the fat side just to uh, crisp it up. I was going to serve it on a cutting board like this, but I think, and I was going to carve it with my nice sharp knife, but I think the stage that it's at, I'm just going to put it on the plate, um, crispy side up, and we'll just eat it like that and should be able to just pull it apart with some forks. I like that. So I'm going to serve it on a clean plate. This is looking as good as my never boil again recipe. And if you haven't tried that, it's a really super popular um, corned beef recipe. Lots of comments. Everybody loves it. And basically it's, you don't boil. You don't want to boil. It just takes all the flavor out. Cooking it like this, it's sous vide, for one, at 160 degrees for 24 hours and then putting a little reverse sear on this. Man, you can't beat that. The smell, it tastes like really good, flavorful corned beef. Sorry about the wind. And I also made some keto baked beans. They're made with, if you haven't tried them, they're made with black organic soybeans and there's no carbs, virtually none. Um, I think one, one half cup of the beans has uh, one carb and this particular serving because I've got sugar-free barbecue sauce in there and some a little bit of vegetables like uh, peppers and, um, and onions. It takes the carb count up a little bit so I think it's two or three carbs per serving and that's I'm saying that that's four servings but it's actually more than that so because I would never eat a quarter of that but those are my keto baked beans so we're gonna have that tonight I know it's a little unusual but it's gonna go really well with this this corned beef look at that that's sous vide corned beef with a reverse sear wow that's great thanks for watching